reading the Bible and come across a verse that almost messes up your entire spirituality? Well, for me, for a long time, that verse was James 5.16, where it says, The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Good morning, my friends, from Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And I'm not a righteous man, and I know that. In fact, Paul tells us that none are righteous. No, not one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so I used that verse in James 5.16 to give God an excuse not to answer my prayers for a long time. Then I read Hebrews 11, where it says that Abel and Abraham and Moses and Noah, they believed in God, and it was counted unto them for righteousness. Hebrews 11.1, 1, that famous faith verse that says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That means when we pray to a God that we can't see and believe that he will answer our prayers for things that we have no other reason to expect, that's the faith that God's, God counts unto us for righteousness. And that's good news. So when I look at James 5.16 again in that light, and look at the next two verses, say, Elijah was a man just like us, and he prayed fervently that it would not rain, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. That was for God's purposes, at least. And then he prayed again, and it rained. That tells me that the power of prayer is not in the person praying. It's also not in the prayer itself. But the power of prayer is in the one that we're praying to. If we lift him up, and we pray to him, and we believe in him, that's where the power of prayer comes from. That's good news for you and me today. And if you're watching this, you're my friend, and I love you. And I thank God for you every day. But Jesus loves you more. Have an awesome day.